Hi guys, so today I'm here with a new name video for you and this video is going to be on really beautiful, rare, princessy names that you might not have heard before. None of these names are popular and none of them were used more than 10 times in the United States in 2016. Some of them have been the names of real princesses or queens or mythological princesses, saints, goddesses, flowers. So if you are looking for an unusual, beautiful princessy choice, you might want to consider one of the names in this video. So the first princessy unusual name I have on this list is Lalibela. Lalibela is actually an ancient city in Ethiopia and it's most famous for its amazing medieval churches that are cut out of the rocky hills and were all built before the 14th century. If you go online and you look at the pictures of these churches, they are just amazing. Lalibela I think would make a beautiful Isabella alternative and the city was named for King Lalibela of Ethiopia. Lalibela means even the bees recognize his sovereignty which is just a really cool interesting meaning and this could be an interesting way to get the nickname Bella Lalibela. I love love saying it. The next name I have is Melantha. Melantha is a name derived from Mel and the Greek word for flower. It was first used in a 17th century play by John Dryden. And I think this makes a beautiful Melanie alternative and could honor a Melanie. And you could get the nicknames Mel or Lainey, which would be super cutesy nicknames for a very bold princessy name. The next name on this list might be my favorite one, and that is Adeliza. Adeliza was a daughter of William the Conqueror and Matilda of Flanders. This is one medieval name that needs to come back into use, especially with the popularity of names like Adelaide and Adeline and Eliza. Adeliza would be an amazing choice for parents who are looking for a unique princessy choice that would still fit in with modern trends. The next name I have is Ostara. Ostara comes from the name of the Germanic goddess of fertility and spring. So this name is related to the word east. Um, or towards the sun and would be a beautiful choice for a little girl born in the spring or around Easter. And six girls were given this name in 2016. Ostara, so pretty. And you could use the nickname Star or Starry. The next name I have is Gemeline. Gemeline comes from the Latin Geminus, meaning twin, as in Gemini, the constellation. This would make an amazing Emmeline alternative, and you could get the adorable nicknames Gem or Gemma. The next name I have is Glafira. Glafira is a Russian name that means smooth. This was the name of an ancient Anatolian princess. I just think it's so beautiful and has such a unique sound, and I love the option of the nickname Fira because I love that name on its own as well. So as a nickname, it makes this name even more appealing. The next name I have is Jacosa. Jacosa is a medieval variant of the name Joyce, meaning merry and playful. So I think this would be a beautiful way to honor a Joyce. I know I have several Joyces in my family. It could only also honor a Josephine and the nickname Jo would make it kind of more modern and edgy, especially if she grew up to be a tomboy. Then I have the gorgeous Rosalil. Rosalil or Rosalil is a Danish name that's just a contraction of Rose and Lily. I just think this name is as girly and gorgeous as they come. There's actually an adorable Danish children's book series about a flower fairy named Rosalil. Of course, I can't make a list without putting at least one Cornish name on it. 
And so the name I chose was Sonara. Sonara is the name of a Cornish saint who is the patron saint of the village of Zenor, um, where I actually have ancestors who lived. <laughs> it may also be related to the name Helen, which means light. I think Sonara fits in with names like Selena and Serena, and so I don't think it would be that out there to use in North America. The next name I have is Tulia. Tulia is such a spunky name and it really rolls off the tongue in a similar way as Tulula. It comes from a Roman family name the same way that Julia does and I think it could honor a Julia. I just love saying this name. I think it would make a really beautiful princessy name choice or even a princessy middle name choice, Tulia. Then I have Anfisa. Anfisa is the Russian form of Anthea, which is another name I love, and it means flower. This was a 9th century Byzantine saint, and this name is making a comeback in Russia, and I think Fia or Fisa would be an adorable nickname choice. The next name please don't kill me if I get the pronunciation wrong, is a Japanese name, and that is Aratama. Aratama is a Japanese name that means rough jewel or uncut gem. And I feel like this name is so stunning and could fit in with names like Arabella or Araminta. And it's also the name of a rare Japanese maple tree. I adore this name. I think in North America it would probably be pronounced Aratama. Um, but if you know the Japanese pronunciation, feel free to write it in the comments below. Then I have Illyria. Illyria is one of the most beautiful names in my opinion. It's a Greek place name and the feminine form of Illyrius. Shakespeare's play uh, Twelfth Night is set in a fictional place called Illyria. To me this name is absolutely magical and I think it would be a very cool Isabella alternative. Another name I'm absolutely in love with right now is Olesia. Olesia is a diminutive of Olga. I think Olesia would be the perfect gorgeous princessy alternative to Olivia, especially if you love that O-L beginning. And this name has just a beautiful Russian charm to it, and it was given to six girls in the U.S. in 2016. Another possible Olivia alternative is Orinthia. Orinthia is a Latin name that means to excite or stir the mind. So if you are a scholar or you just love, if you're a Ravenclaw, <laughs> This one might be for you. It has a literary tie in that George Bernard Shaw used it in his play The Apple Cart. Um, this name might appeal to parents as an alternative to Olivia. Um, or because you can get the nickname Thea, which I love. The next name I have is Elocadia. This is a Spanish variation of Leocadia, which is also a stunning name, but I chose to put Elocadia on the list because parents are really loving that E-L beginning for names, with names like Ella, Eleanor, Eliana, Elowin, and this is an E-L name that I think would be such a standout choice. Then I have Thalassa. Thalassa means sea in Greek, and in Greek mythology she was actually the personification of the sea. So this would be such a gorgeous choice for your little mermaid baby. I think it would be a great choice, especially if you have some sort of special connection to the ocean that you would love to pass on to your daughter. Then I have Suniva. Suniva is a Scandinavian name that means sun gift. This would be such a lovely choice for a little girl born on a sunny summer day and I think the nickname Sunny would be so cute for Suniva. Um, this is the name of an English saint and this is actually the most popular name on this list and it was given to nine girls in 2016 in the US. And I saved one of my favorites for last, and that is Feralith. Feralith is a Scottish name that means true sovereignty, so definitely a meaning fit for a princess. 
Charlotte is a whimsical princessy name that has been used among European royals and I think Fairy would make an adorable nickname choice for Fairless. So let me know what you thought of these names and what are your favorite whimsical fairy tale princess names. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Amelia Everything Baby Names. I post daily on there, fun name lists, and just little goodies. So definitely go check out my Instagram. And thank you guys so so much for watching and as always I will talk to you later. Bye.